you know. Talensi. What kind of Talensi is that? What is that? Um, caramel apple pie. Okay. That's the truth. We're trying to get, we're trying to get sponsors. That's what we're doing. I, I guess I mean, so. I don't know what y'all uh, are trying to do, but uh, Talensi. I hear you. Well, welcome back to the Ask Arena Live after show. I messed up last week. I think because I was just out of it. It was episode five last week what so this is really is, yes five? i realized when i was cutting up the show i was like wait why does it say episode four already i was like oh snap it's episode five well and this is episode six so we are moving right along i like it i like it yes so i'm proud of us i am i'm so proud because let me tell you my youtube has been a very barren place for at least a year or so <laughs> so very barren so i am just so happy to have some activity there for once now but yeah we are back um i am janine truitt chief innovations officer for talent think innovations llc based here in new york where i focus on workforce planning, digital transformation, and tech advisory, just to name a few. So if you ever want to learn more about what I do, you can follow me at www.talentthinkinnovations.com. And I will let my lovely co-hosts introduce themselves as well. Good evening, everyone. I am Sarah Morgan. I'm the Chief Excellence Officer of Buzzaroni LLC, a coaching and consulting organization based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you so much. You can find me at the Buzz on HR on all social media. Google me. Yes. Google I me. You. Google me. I like it. When you can say Google, no, can, <laughs> I know, right? Just say this when you can say, I, and I have ran that. I have to say, when you can literally say Google me, because you got like about, like I'm getting up into like 10 and 12 pages now of Gene mm -hmm. and Truett. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Y'all on a it different is. level right now. Yes. Y'all real different. I'm so proud yes. to be at the table. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Dr. Paul McNeil. I'm the founder of MB Usable Security. We focus on marketing and cybersecurity analytics, focusing on making cybersecurity make sense for small businesses. Um, you can find me on Twitter as Usable Set Guy, and then also online at www and be usable security.com. So. I'm back. I just didn't want to be gross. I had like this piece of gum that I was trying to get stuck out. I, I didn't think you guys wanted happened. to see. Yeah, I'm gonna be think, eating this. I'm gonna be eating this gelato. So um, I didn't think you guys wanted to see me take all of that out, you know. Y'all gonna watch you. me eat this. I'm not stopping. So just heads up. Okay. You, you are becoming the sideshow of this. I, I can well see. Sideshow, sideshow, Pablo. Side <laughs> word. <laughs> Between the outfits and the hats and like the food, listen, like listen. I just I mean, regular. Damn, I just I regular. I, now I feel like I should have just came with I a glass of wine. I damn sure deserve it after the day I had. But you should have pull up. I should have pulled up. So it guys, taboo. Acts of love. Yeah, so the list of 15, um, it wasn't as taboo as I thought it was. I know. I so, thought we were gonna get into something different. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. yeah. I, I was I was gonna I was gonna rock with you now, no matter what. I right. was well, rock with you, I mean, but I was nervous. I have my yeah. eyes too ready to keep me mute just again. I'm like, oh um, sorry. Oh. I got my prop ready. Yeah, Prepared. no, I, I was shocked myself. I mean, I didn't really know what I was going to find, you know? Like, I know what I thought was taboo in my head, but um, I didn't know what I was going to find. So when it came up like that, I was like, oh, is that what we're calling taboo these days? Um you know, but it, and that was a recent article because I think you said it was like sometime in 2018. So it's not like that was, you know, a yeah. few years old. That was pretty recent. So I think it's interesting, you know, like that we're calling things taboo that aren't so taboo, right? Because I feel like we all know a person or it could be the one that we see in the mirror who has done some of these things, mm -hmm. right? So 
I, oh, no, like to, to, to me, when, I mean, you can you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is a purely just from a purely societal perspective. I, I think when you have a substantial number of people engaging in an act, I don't know that it can be taboo anymore. I agree. I don't. I mean, I looked at most of this list, and I was like, you know, I'm running through the the list of 15 things. Now, some of them. Like there was like lawyer, client, and doctor, patient. Like I kind of grouped them all together. Mm -hmm. But you know, all but nothing. None of it was super shocking or revolutionary in terms of of what was going on. Like, you know, I was thinking, you know, I mean, there's so many reality shows. You got like Love After Lockup and Love, you know, Circus Love, Big. Like I was expecting there to be something on there that was gonna be shocking and something I hadn't heard before and no nah, that that didn't do it um and well, so I agree I agree with you I don't think that there are enough people engaging in all of these things that at some point when does the taboo of it go away right but I also wonder too where where they pulled this uh their sample from right because if you're looking at metropolitan areas the coast you know, that kind of stuff, you're seeing it a lot more. Polyamory, things like that. But Bible Belt, Middle America, you still have a lot of very conservative values where this stuff would be seen, you know, small towns, things of that nature. So that was something that I was wondering too, is like, who are they speaking to? Because if you go and do a survey of 100 people in Brooklyn, you know what I mean? Um, as opposed to, I don't know, Athens, Georgia, or something like that, it's going to be two completely different, you know, kind of lists, I think. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, who Trump, fair. but who Trump's, to, I mean, who, and I don't have the numbers. I mean, is the Bible Belt the majority of America or are these other metropolitan areas more representative, do you think, of, you know, what's really going on? I don't, I don't know. I think, I think that the metropolitan areas and the coast generally are at the forefront of, of things. So, you know, fashion, uh, the stuff that's going to be pushed in the movies on stage and things of that nature. And it ends up trickling out to the rest of, of America. Like I, I know growing up when we moved, I remember at one point, every time we moved, fashion would like follow. So like we were in New York and then we moved to, to like Ohio and they were just doing stuff that we weren't doing in New York anymore. Then I left Ohio and then I hit like Michigan and they were just starting to do this stuff. We just, I was like, how long are these same clothes going to be cool? Like this is horrible. Um, and so right. I, I think it's your mom same. was probably happy though. Like that same turn, he's like, You can wear this again. This is this, this no, <laughs> that's what I would be doing with my kids. Like, oh, just roll them I, sleeves it, up, they don't they can see your elbows. It's all good. It, it just became a thing that we would do most of our real shopping when we would go back to New York for the holidays, um, during December. And so that just became like my time for shopping. So like, even now I don't buy a lot of stuff in the air, but it hit December then I might slide through New York and just go on a little spree and then come back out here where nobody has stuff that I have, which is pretty cool. That's the stunt. Yeah. Stunt, you know? stunt. Hey. No, no. Basically, hey. no, no. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. But, yeah. um, but, but I, think, I think it's similar with the ideologies as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so is marriage, I mean, are conventional relationships as we know it, marriage dead? I mean, again, aside from regional things, like, is it dead or does it just need to be reimagined? I think it needs to be reimagined. I mean, you look at, particularly divorce is at what, like almost 60% now? It's ridiculous. Something like that. Yeah. Um, yep. So you're going to have a lot more naturally blended families mm -hmm. and with that comes all kinds of creative arrangements I live that now um and we have great I have great relationships with my husband's ex-wife and his baby mama he got two you know because he was a teen dad and then got married had children they got divorced we're together now we don't so we have you know step siblings, half siblings. I mean, we, you know, you name it, we got it in this mix. And we got to figure things out. And I'm, we're not alone or unique, you know, as far as that goes. So 
I think you're going to have to start reimagining what marriage and family and all of that stuff looks like and means in modern times because it's not going to look like it did if it ever did because it's not like people didn't have like whole second families and stuff like you know I mean the 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 myth of like you know the the cousins and the the side children and the side piece showing up at the funeral like those are real okay stories that's real stuff so it's not like those any of that is new it's not like I, th- I think we're just more open, you know, about it now, but it, it's far more commonplace than I think we give, you know, we give it credit for being. So in some regard, it's already existed. I guess we're just normalizing it, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing because you have whole generations of families and kids who were, you know, super divided and separated. You feeling like, a bastard you know and now we don't have to define people that way um and so i don't think that that's a bad thing i I think that there's potential there for just a lot more like peace and love if you just you know roll with it and accept people as flawed um that's nothing new and and just move forward yeah pablo um, I mean, I, I, I think, I, I, I agree. You know, I, I, I think it's really interesting because, um, your your point, Sarah, regarding um, this stuff's not really new. Because if you go back, like, on like Hotepian hat tip, like, black families have been being broken up forever, right, since slave time. So. Yep that kind of blended mixture really is kind of entrenched. And so it's interesting to see that where I am interested to see how a lot um, this growth or normalization of polyamory happens is in the next generations. And so, um, because like I had a conversation with a friend from Ghana. And so she was saying she was like, her grandfather had several wives and so forth and she was like you know you come over here and everyone's like oh you know we're doing polyamory and we're doing these types of things but they don't think about what it looks like for the children down the road so she grew up as a grandchild coming from that where it was normalized and she said you know we have favorite um uncles there are there's division among the parent the kids there's like a lot of these different wars and things of that nature internally within the family this certain like one grandmother she has never seen before or only seen a few times because her biological grandmother isn't really cool with with it and it's a it's a different kind of struggle that i don't know that in the states and in western culture we really thought about that after effect and that's one of the things that for me is always like kind of um something that i think about too because it's like okay yeah i could have um, two girls or uh, a girl and I have this guy and we're this, you know, was a trouble or whatever the case may be. What's that look like if we decide to go super long term with this? Mm. And wow. do I have enough of, am I liberated in my mind or, or am that open where a lot of the values that I was raised with, right? that I'll be able to reconcile that. How do I introduce that to, to my kid, things of that nature? Now, I know that there's been a similar talk you know, when it came to uh, with gay marriage and so forth, people like, oh, hold on, wait a second, how would we go about it? But it was still something that needed to be addressed in that space too, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. So like, can we love more than one person? What do y'all think? Can you love more than one person romantically, like, like at a time? I mean, not you, but do you think it's possible at scale to do this? Because that's this is the crux of it. There. This is like free love 3.0 in my head, you know, like. I don't know if I believe, I feel like at some point somebody's getting gypped. Like, you know, wife five, I don't know. Somebody's not getting, (laughs) you know, somebody's not getting the full, you know, relationship that they deserve. I don't know how you be fulfilled as wife number five. I don't know how you do that. 
Um, right. somebody's, not, somebody's not getting what it is that they need or you, or husband number three, you know, I don't know how, I don't know. I feel like somebody's not getting, you know, what it is that they need. I understand how to this current generation, it can be more attractive because you see so much, you know, cheating and all of the stuff that goes right. on with that. And so this idea that let's just be honest and open and try things. Um, but yeah, at some point, I feel like somebody is not, somebody's getting, somebody's just not getting enough. Um, so I don't, and I guess that's left to the individual to know what their limitations are and whether or not they can handle, you know, how what they can handle. One, two, 10, you know, um, when do you make the decision that you've gone too far. I just, I don't know. Um, but to me, it would feel like at some point, somebody's not getting what they need um, emotionally, sexually, like somebody, you lose, you losing out, you losing out somewhere along the line. And so I just, I don't know. I don't know if I, um, yeah, I, I, lots of people try it on either you know publicly or on the low but uh, at some point I feel like somebody's not somebody's not getting enough um and we see that like in the the few reality shows that they have about polyamorous relationships and the whole sister wives thing you see them complain and get into arguments about not feeling like they're getting enough time so somewhere um yeah somewhere it's, it's gonna fall apart I think I think it. I think it's going to start to be looked at a lot of the way we're starting to see the whole LGBTQ thing as spectrum. You know what I mean? Like I think it helps to look at it from a spectrum perspective. Whereas, um, you know, for some people they're highly, highly monogamous, and that's where they're going to be. That's what's comfortable. And then you have have some people that are right on the border of like monogamy and non-monogamy. In other words, like they might be monogamous at certain points and then they might be like, okay, I think non-monogamy makes sense right now, you know, for whatever reason. And then you have those that are just slightly well beyond that, that, you know, they're, they're just kind of open and they're open to all these different parameters. But I think we're looking at more spectrum going forward when it comes to relationships. I, I'm greedy, so. I don't know. I don't know how that, you know, like, I don't know if I could, I fundamentally, I can understand how it would be somehow dope to connect with, because like, let's be real about it. You connect with people all the time, regardless of whether you're married or whatever the case is, we connect with each other. And there are certainly times when you, you have such a profound connection with somebody that you say, Say to yourself regardless of your situation like that person's kind of dope you know in another mm -hmm. space in another time we say right. to ourselves out, out of convention in another space in another time i might have explored something there but the reality is if convention was aside and you knew you wouldn't be judged you would explore that right then and you'd keep what you had you, you just would and i just yeah. I guess for me, I wish, I look forward to the day that we all could be more honest and have more honest conversations about that reality, you know, because it's, it's true. You don't, it's not linear. It's not a situation where, you know, you run off into the sunset, everybody throws petals at you, and then forevermore, you'll never connect or vibe with somebody on a level, you know, and it doesn't have to be sexual at all it's just i'm on a plane you happen to be the passenger next to me we end up having a great conversation you're brilliant and you happen to look good as well you're easy on the eyes and like we just vibe it's like well, damn and then it's over because it has to be over right because society says i can't have a connection with you i'm a horrible person if i have a connection with you right when the reality really needs to be that we need to be exploring why biologically we can connect that way. Like, I don't think that we would connect that way if we couldn't. We can, and that we can doesn't always mean that we should, which is I think what they try to get ahead of with marriage, but 
it doesn't always pan out because obviously people cheat and sneak and do all these things, which is why we can sit here and have a discussion about taboo acts of love. So it's, it's very interesting, but I, I hope that, you know, future generations get to a point where they can say these things out loud because among ourselves, among my own group of friends, at least, I mean, it's like, yeah, he was kind of dope. <laughs> I'm going to tell, go run home and tell my husband, but, or my partner, but it happens, right? Yeah, and it's no harm or foul to the person you have at home that's holding you down, but it, it just, it is what it is. And it happens on, and I think it also, I think people think that it doesn't happen for us as women as much as it happens for men, but it, it, it does. That's <laughs> like that's, that's a black ass lie. That's a black ass lie. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, pa thoughts. Pablo's going, you going silent. Pablo's grinning. I, I feel like Pablo got so good over there. Right, and you almost Are finished you, this gelato. So. Gelato is caramel apple pie. It's amazing. We're gonna tag um, them on Twitter so when we post this video. We're we, we about to get it's so like ad dollars or something. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's so no, delicious. but I so saw you I'm nodding, called. Doc. So like you were nodding. Yeah, I, you I, I was nodding. like, man, I'm about to get into this gel gelato right here. Seriously, Why though. Are you sure? No, um, no, I think I was nodding because you're. Uh, you were saying that uh, a lot of times women also have these connections and people don't think about that. And I was saying, yes, because I've, I have a lot of um, friends who have expressed that. They'll say, you know, we were this place or the other, or sometimes there's like just enjoying a conversation with one, uh, another male friend or female friend, depending on, on whatever the context and just go, man, something about this person. Um, and also, we don't talk about it as much. And I think it's starting to become more known, but women are like the best cheaters in the game. Oh. Just in general. You so go, go it's there. like, huh? <laughs> you, said, you said what? We go with there. We I mean, we are. I just, it, it is what it is. It's the truth. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it, it's interesting that even now, as we have all these different transparent social media, we're having these conversations that there are still these pretend hangups about women and their sexuality. So that's kind of cool. That's a little uh, feminist adjacent plug for the evening. I'm good. All right. Shout to out you. to feminism. That's <laughs> Shout out to yeah. male feminism. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting that you say that. I mean, it, yeah, it is. There's still such a taboo around having that discussion. I mean, as part of why I said what I said in the beginning of the show, you know, there's this perception that because of who I've put out there and who I am in business that, well, why would you ever have a discussion about sex? Why would you say that aloud <laughs> on camera? Nonetheless, it's I like, know. I'm, I am chief innovations officer. I'm all of that. And then I'm, I'm just a human being that does all the above. And so, so you got I don't three really... children, so. To bat, to bat, yeah, right. So it's kind of like, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm trying to create a situation going forward where there has, there doesn't have to be so much of a divide between who we are in life, in real life versus these personas we create, like, because then you start losing yourself like wait who's that person again <laughs> you know oh yeah she's pretty dope but i don't know her day to day you know i mean we just should be able i think to be adult enough to have adult conversations um and not, not have it be conflated by the work that we're doing out here in the world you know that i i care about mm -hmm. orgasms or sex tech or any of that stuff should not detract otherwise from the value of the things I talk about in other ways, I feel. Agreed. Sarah? And agreed. And as we had the conversation last week when we were talking about sex tech, you know, if it was the sex tech related to the pleasing of men, no one cares. But suddenly we start talking about women and their pleasure and their sexuality and it becomes this like horrible thing. So yeah, I agree with all of that. Although we're not letting the doctor off the hook with this comment. I'm sorry? Women, 
women being better cheaters, we not letting we not letting yeah, you off the I hook. Really, I really I'm gonna need some receipts. Our women to know that you know we we respect we respect their hustle. Ladies is pimps too. Brush your shoulders off. But but like how so? Give 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 us some meat. Give us some meat because I like this conversation. Like what, conversation? what, what makes mean, us I better? Friends, cheaters? I you said what? What makes us better cheaters? Um, according to some articles, a personal experience, anecdotal, a hodgepodge of things. Hodgepodge. Just, Give me hodgepodge. 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 Yeah, hodgepodge. Uh, hodgepodge. So hodgepodge. I have a couple, couple of friends, you know, and uh, they just very. When, when a lot of my homeboys are are cheating, they get very lazy. They're not always meticulous, right? Women pay attention to detail, just in general. So you send a picture and they're like, oh, I noticed you got this painting behind you and that doesn't look like something a guy would pick out. You all did it last week. Y'all were like, mm, this painting right there. Uh, <laughs> we did, we did. Hold on, we did. what's going on? Right the painting from, we did. So, <laughs> so then you go, oh, okay, wait a second. All right. Now, a guy would, you know, if I'm trying to do something shady McShade, I'm, I'm messed up right now in the game. Women, not so much. They like fly me out over here, business meeting this, and things of that nature. I got another friend. She, I mean, it's just everything is always around her kids, but it's not really around her kids, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, oh, I'm doing this extra PTA thing, and PTA don't got nothing to do with wherever elementary at all you know so there's there's like processes that i'll put in place i feel like i feel like the the female friends i have who do cheat um they see it as another job it's not a hobby and it's not a game damn it's a job it's it's, it's a job and they go out like it's a job and so um a lot of guys do not. And your not job really is to make sure that your day job don't know about your moonlight. Word. That's, Word. that's part you of the job. Gig. I'm not disagreeing with you, Doc. I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> Once upon a time, not in my current life, but in my former life, much like Joan of Arc, yes. I have been there. So Listen, we all grow. We all grow. We all all grow. grow. We all grow. I, I, I must, I, I would concur. I, you know, look, you guys are not good at it. It, you mm -hmm. just not. I don't think I've ever. I'm searching the archives. I'm computing right now. I don't think I can remember a man ever that was good at cheating. Oh, and now I know some of those. I, I, I there won't, might I, be I, some, I but I'm saying they're slim. Eventually, there's a, a slip up. You get sloppy. You get comfortable, and there's a slip up. I yeah. think where women tend to excel is we're good at covering our tracks well. We're good at the plausible stories, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we will do that with, with good poker face. Yeah. Um, and so when you, I've gotten caught, because you know, I wanted to get caught. It was like, when, in my younger uh, years, when I, was how, when I didn't know how to properly end a relationship, in a in a mature healthy way then let's go on out here and get caught on the creek and then he gotta dump you because that's the code so yeah so yeah get, let's get caught on the creek like if i got caught it was because i wanted to be caught not because i was sloppy in my planning i was like well i'm done with this over here so yeah <laughs> Right. I mean, like, yeah. I'm not bringing home, you know, I'm not bringing home evidence of the play. That, that this, this is just always perplexing to me. Y'all will come home with train tickets. Y'all will think you have discarded of pictures and leave negatives. Like, dumb shit. Dumb shit. You see, with, uh, see I'm now a woman. Pinky out. Right. A woman would have burnt the negatives, would have burnt the negatives and you would have saw only the picture she wanted you to see. The train ticket would have never came back in the house. Would have never came back in the house, would have been gone. Long right, gone. Y'all ball it up and leave it in like the console. And, and, the a, pile, 
or some dumb I, shit. I, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? Hey, put this out here. How? Y'all are doing I, Dr. Paul McNeil, I'm over here eating gelato. There are guys <laughs> who just ball it up and put it in their pocket. Let's make that clear <laughs> distinction. I'm eating ice cream. All right. I right. Right. <laughs> it's, you know, like that, if you're going to do it, like just at least be good about it. I mean, right. at least try. I think, I think women can appreciate the, the, the attempt at trying to cover your tracks. So even if I still find out, it's like, well, damn, he at least tried. He didn't really want me to find out. But when you're just like willy nilly with it, you know, the lipstick on the collar, you know, the, the, yeah. that can happen from you don't, you don't have a life. proper code on the phone and, you know, little WhatsApp messages are popping up and shit like that. That's just, yeah. that's just, you know, that's just, up that's AA a can't do it. Can't do it. You, gotta, you gotta cover all the tracks, put the mortar over all of it, plaster and mortar. I don't know none about none about nothing. Black men don't cheat. So um Let me just go and rock with that. I'm gonna go. I'm a, black men don't cheat 2019. That's I'm done. That's a that's a new hashtag. <laughs> 20, <laughs> that's 2018, I, had, I heard it on the I I saw it on the interweb, so it gotta be true. It's a thirst trap. Bonjour. It's a thirst trap. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's uh let's talk about the next topic. What was the other one? It was uh well, I want to know what of the the fifteen taboos. Who's done what? Like we not we not gonna get out of this show without oh, no. skipping past that one. Hey, Ty, look at that oh, time. Hold up. Look at the time. Cool. What's wow. that? Oh, time. oh it's my it's goodness. Time to go. No. I gotta go lay my child down. I gotta go put my kid to bed. It's it's what, feeding which time. Which kid is that? But you already said huh? you ain't got no kids though, so you can't now. But it's, the, it's it, listen, listen. The goldfish. Um, it, listen, I got I got a new child that just appeared. Right when Sarah mentioned uh, going down this list, and uh, I can go down the list, I'm good. Gucci, amazing. So let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna plead the fifth in advance. Renowned jerk, check, check. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. nah, never a, a boss employee. No. Yep. Never a neighbor. Never a step no. something. No. Ew. Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Um, yeah, that's gross. No teacher, student, although I've definitely had teachers come on to me. Same. Can't uh, do it. Much older, check, check. Mm. Never did much done. younger. Pertinent yeah, to last week. I haven't done the much younger. It just never appeals. But you listen, know. it's some strong stream young bucks out here. All right, I need the strong stream. We we counting on you. For we sure. got some strong stream young bucks out here. I'm just saying, don't yeah, count them uh, out. No. Don't count them out. Um, but wow. yeah, definitely did the much older. Um, never religiously committed. Never had that. Mm -mm. No never scenario. Had that. Um, friends ex, mm-mm. Yeah, I have. Whoop. A friend's ex? Like friend. my ex's friend? Yeah, I have. A couple, couple times. Oh, wait a minute. Your ex's friend, not yeah. your friend's ex. Oh, no, not my friend's ex. Mm-mm. Okay, true. your ex's oh, okay. But my ex's not. friends, I have. Let me dig, wait, let me, let, yeah. let me really think about this objectively. Have I? No. Mm -mm. I'd just be over here eating ice cream. Two first, two first cousins, <laughs> yes. But it was a mistake. I didn't realize until it was way late. It was like, oh. I was like, wait, y'all cousin? Damn. Okay. Um, mine was on purpose. I'm, I, it is what it is. It you such a Leo. What? <laughs> She's such a Leo. Yo, yo. Yo, no, Sarah is savage. Like, I feel like what? Sarah is like, like, oh, have y'all heard that Lizzo song where she's like, oh, we just friends and help hook me up with your homeboy? Yeah. Uh, what's that song? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. It happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, like, yeah, you know, life. The Taken Man. Yeah. 
Nah. Yeah. Not married. Not married, but taken. Yes. Yeah. Same. Yes. Um. No strict cutty buddy. I don't think I want to answer that. I'm gonna plead the fifth. I have hey. once in my once upon a time, long time ago. Back in the olden days. Back in the old days. The 90s and early 2000s were great. Ah! <laughs> they were great for so many Look reasons. That. Look at that. No that evidence. It's because there was no evidence. We and are exactly. no evidence. Let me and tell you. And gas prices exactly. was low. Yo. That's what I'm talking about. I was in the 90s was a on the dollar for gas. Exactly. I remember. Buck 50 at Amico. Amico yes. all day long. Filling up, riding out, and riding out. Okay. Listen, I, <laughs> I remember I got older. I was like watching Moesha. I realized I started looking at the. I was like, they just rolling in jeeps for no reason. What is? I am crazy. Crazy. I'm like four dollars a gallon. I'm not gas driving nowhere. For as hell. That's why gas is low as hell. You could cap a jeep back then. Yes. Gas was low. I was like, oh, this is. They I used just to drive, be able to drive around and pick up dudes and pick up girls. We just go pick them up at the stop. I was like, we just stopping at lights, starting and stopping the car. We don't got no goals. We used to be chilling. Mm -mm. Straight mm -mm. up chilling. And I am forever thankful that those years are nowhere other nowhere. than an archive pictures because you see then here I was like modeling and we were at clubs me and my friends and it was pure debauchery pure debauchery oh, that I have that like there's times that I pull up those pictures and I'm like oh <sighs> thank god social media wasn't because we would have been it, so think, much trouble yeah so much like trouble. and it's why I think I can have some and we've had this discussion before it's why I think I can have some empathy for this newer generation and, and what they do do like if Black Planet was far more advanced than it was in my space and all those things we were mm -hmm. posting on, there would be a significant digital footprint that we'd be having to answer to. Now, there, there are some like just straight up dumb stuff that I think the younger generation does that I don't think I would have ever done. But, you know, I was young nonetheless and doing all sorts of mess. And I can't say with any certainty that if Instagram or any of those things were you know alive and well then that I wouldn't have been posting and been very <laughs> um upset yeah. with myself for posting some of the shit that went on <laughs> so you know like man we 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 forget we all forget we get older and then you're like oh these young people blah 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 yeah I try not and, to do that with my kids because that they're all teens now and you know I can reflect on my teenage years and I know like I, I told the story I got mad at our uh he was 14 at the time he's 15 now but he tried to sneak into the movies and um they don't let the kid even for PG-13 movies they don't let kids in the movie theaters after seven o'clock without a parent unless you're 16 and so he goes to the movies with his friends they try to get in and the dude goes to sell him a ticket. And I was like, how old are you? He's like, I'm 16. He was just like, what year were you born? Uh, sorry. <laughs> you can't, uh, you can't, uh, no. I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> Not only am I mad that I got to come back and get you, <laughs> but I'm mad that you messed this up. Like you had one job. Your job was to get everybody's ticket. Get the year right. And get them right. in. No, you so had one job. Right. Like, and now I got to come back and take all y'all home. That's not cool. So, but again, we snuck in the movies and yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's kids do kids stuff. You got to leave space. And as a parent, I think you just got to be real about what that is and the lessons you learned and try to direct them to do better, but then also don't limit them from doing what kids do. I mean, so. you got to do what you got to do. Like I, I already know, like in my older age, they're going to you know, all go through my little rubber made bin with all my old pictures and they're going to be like, mommy. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me find out. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of that. <laughs> it's oh, it's tucked away. They they're like, can we see? No, you're not no, ready for not that yet. State yet. No, not yet. Not quite so, yet. Mm -hmm. Talk to me when you're about 18, maybe. Mm -hmm. Might be 21, not sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I came up, I, I came up at that cusp. So <laughs> my stuff is, it, we, we didn't do, we're like, mm, the internet is forever. People getting hacked out here. Y'all playing. Cameras down. Phones in this bag. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, even I started it even like um, purging some of my earlier things like on Instagram just recently because I was looking at like how many posts I had. I was like, why yeah, I got I so much data it. out here? That's crazy. So I've definitely spent the past few weekends just kind of going back because I think I started back in 2012. So I was just like, it's certain things I archived that was like cute of the kids and things like that. And other stuff I was like, delete, delete, delete. Like yeah, my I goal is to do that. I got like 3,000 pictures. Yeah, I got like 3,000 nah, pictures on Instagram. <clears throat> I mean, for me, a lot of these things started to pop when I was like wrapping up college or in college and stuff. So initially, social media was really just like my way of um, storing photos, not on my computer, because the cloud wasn't really a thing yet. Mm -hmm. um, not like it is now. You know what I mean? Now I feel old saying it like that, but it really was You're always so old. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so for me, that was always like Facebook was just like, well, this is where my photo album is. Now I don't have to save it on my computer. Cool. And so I, I don't have, to, most of my, when I'm younger, is more event-based and stuff like that. But like I said, because, um, I think because social media was so huge around the time that I was leaving high school and getting into college, um, you know, Facebook was on the, on the rise at that point. And MySpace had already kind of the lion's share at that point. It was kind of like, okay, people can see this. Um, I think where, I remember the transition from MySpace to Facebook where it was like, everybody can see everything. Cause even on MySpace, you could kind of keep certain things private. And there were these yeah. like almost social <laughs> norms within MySpace that Facebook was just kind of like, nope, not only are we showing everybody everything, we're gonna tell everybody when you like something, we're gonna tell everybody when you play a game, we're gonna tell, like it used to just be extra. You know, Janine is in a relationship now. Janine just broke up, like, whoa, what is this? Is it was a lot going on, but um, Facebook be snitching in the street. Listen, when I realized Zuckerberg wasn't for the people, was when he allowed uh, the little red receipts and the messages. I remember when they had that. I was like, "And I'm good." <laughs> Zuck, Zuck is out here trying to get people caught up. I'm out. I can't. I can't. And then I started. That was around the time when I started like really being careful about how I moved. Cause I was like, it's only a matter of time before this dude starts doing just this. This alone lets me know he's not out here for the homies. I was like, I'm, I'm good on this, and I was right, cause Zucks has not been out here for the homies. So. And as it were, he brought some of that functionality to Instagram. I think a lot of it flies under the radar of most people, but there is mm -hmm. functionality they rolled out like last year that tells people when you're online on Instagram. When yeah, I, I don't like I that. that. I was like, yeah, I'm good on that. We're going to just turn that off. Like, yeah. bad enough people sliding in my DMs all times of the night. I don't need to give you uh -oh. a green light uh -oh. as to when I'm on. Like, no. for real, for real. I mean, the guys who started Instagram are both left Facebook. Um, right. It's, yeah. it's yes. a huge, you know, on a nothing to do, I guess, slightly to do with Taboo Love, but it's like, I've noticed that as Zuckerberg acquires stuff, people see how he moves and they don't like it and then they leave. And so then they left. Um, I know one of the WhatsApp guys, I think, he left a lot of money on the table because he left early. And I'm sitting over here like, boo, I don't give you any bonus points for your conscience, a guilty conscience after you already cashed out. And now you're over here doing a nonprofit. You're not even going to make an alternative and like give us that like you're just like oh it's so sad but i'm gonna do this nonprofit now with my hundreds of millions anyway no no yeah that's why that tech for good still needs to be a thing pablo we need to do that uh, we yeah yeah on I mean, that tech we, need to, we need to get on it we need to put that together been, i think we've only been talking about that for like two years now we need to be pretty much yeah, it's cool. so many ideas so little time so little, I'm so little and so, oh wait, and so much procrastination. Let me just throw that out there. So little time, so much procrastination. We'll get there. Well, this was riveting. I feel like this was cathartic. Yeah. I think this is good. I feel like we could start a trend. Got two HR ladies.
Kathy's on here talking about sex and taboo relationships, and we admit it to our our things. This is liberating. This is huge. It's very. We're gonna push the hell out of this for women's women's month. We're gonna push the hell out. Yes, we're pushing the hell out of this. Let's see. Yeah, let's see out. Yes. The HR stories we have alone is enough. Ooh, and you guys can uh, you guys can share it after so much time, right? As long as you don't use names. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm listen, being messy. I, <laughs> I, I, we have long, long, long histories of switching the names to protect the not so innocent. This Amen. this is the legacy. I've been doing that since I started blogging eight years ago. Okay, I got this yeah. question. But what's what's always fun is when you get that angry message or you get that salty oh. <laughs> conversation on the side like i know you said it was tom but i know that you met me maybe maybe not could, could be yeah. could not be but why are you so angry though it's like why it hits all just a time. story oh, oh, oh. it's just a story there you go facts, so facts. Oh. okay have you guys had this though in all seriousness Oh, no, not I can't. Wait, oh, no. I lost you. Yeah, I lost you, too. You froze up on Okay, me. you're there. The law. I lost you again. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what happened. Where's she going? Oh, no. I can't hear you, but you're not moving. This is so weird. I can't hear her or see her move. Oh, it's over. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Is well, that interesting? Oh, wait, there we go. And oh. we're still recording. I I am so interested to see how this ends up because how it, that's gonna come out. That's gonna be fun. Woo! You you okay. might have to snip snip that part, put to, put together. Yeah, I'll. Yeah, I'm I'm eager to see because I thought I was gonna have to restart. I just went out and then it came back. All right, I see cool. you Zoom. I see you, Zoom. That's what's up. So, yeah, what do you guys got going on before we close it up? Black Blogs Matter continues. We are in week five. Beware the DNI mascots. I did my first vlog this week. So I was excited. And I did it in one take. I was really proud of myself. That's oh, yeah? Yes. That took a lot. That took a lot. So, you know, it wasn't perfect, but <laughs> I just I didn't even... Yeah. mess with it i got all the words out and i was like oh, this is good i'm rolling with this so yeah. yeah more of that and the microblog challenge continues um i am days away from launching the podcast and getting mm -hmm. ready for work human next month so the spring is fitting to be busy it's yay busy. work human i'm excited i'm gonna sneak in yes wait i should have announced that on the internet oh i was a millennial right. just now uh what i do that for if you see so me hard. help me sneak in how about that you heard about it so help me sneak in everybody um yeah. <laughs> I, i'm working on uh <laughs> a couple of things but right now one of the things that i've noticed is just like small businesses um just giving them basic advice on security and things that they can do uh so I'm working on a couple of videos on the uh, MB Usable Security YouTube uh, about for small businesses, helping them, giving them some information about keeping their information secure. And I'm playing around with the idea of doing a webinar at the end of the month. Uh, I'll probably decide over the weekend. Might yeah. do something. Yeah. You know, uh, try, try, try a little bit. Try something. Give a little information. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. I don't have a whole lot to share. So you know what's interesting is this year, I feel like I have things that are going on that I can't talk about. <laughs> like I legitimately legally just can't talk about yet. Um, so but yeah, good things, board, you know, board positions going on and okay. projects. I see you doing moving different. Moving different. Do you know how long I wanted a board position? Yes. Right. yes. So when I am able to talk about good. this particular one, it will be it will be great. And then my TT Power Circle. That is power going circle. The power Listen, circle. I feel like that's not male inclusive, and I've been meaning to talk it's to not. you about that. I appreciate it. It's really not, it's not but it's, not it's so cathartic. 
No, Stay it's mad. so cathartic. I am so happy. <laughs> Stay, mad. Stay mad. Stay mad. Stay mad. Stay mad. Stay mad. <laughs> it's it's just, not, it's not I, just, I just want true equality for all. That's all I'm saying. The the no, buzz want, around it. We're trying to get just, equality. We're trying to get the equality. We can't have true equality until the rest of it. We trying to let's work on this equity. So <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay mad, Pablo. Stay mad. Uh, uh, it's all right. It's all right. Listen, Word. it's cool. Listen, but it's, it's you know it's it's an offline thing, and yet people are watching, and I'm I'm happy yeah. for them to watch. They're tuning yeah. in. Um, and actually, I had somebody say that they needed to see something like this in London. So now I'm like, well, maybe we should talk about that. Oh. That, that would be cool. Like, that would you know, be very there's, cool. There's like, people are watching it. It's a small collective, but people are watching like, that's, oh, that's what you're doing. Oh, we need to talk to you. So yeah. That's fun. It's it's all about the clandestine projects and um, shaking people up, whether Black Lives Matter or other things. Yeah, we're fucking shit up, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Flipping the script, fucking shit up. I love it. <laughs> all right, well, guys, thank you so much, and thank you for tuning in again. And we'll be back next week with a new t- topic. Talk to you soon. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.